What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Craft Your Workshop video. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how to build this really simple, but I think pretty cool looking media console. This was a really basic, simple tool build, very accessible for you guys. This is the second video in a series of videos I'm doing with Lowe's Home Improvement, who is the sponsor of this week's video. And I wanted to make these projects really easy for you guys to reproduce and replicate at home. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and get started with the project. This media console is constructed entirely of three quarter inch plywood, so the first step was breaking down the larger panels into smaller pieces. And I do have free plans available for this project on my website, there's a link in the video description below, and the plans have a detailed cut list and cutting diagram to show you how to break down the plywood most efficiently. And I wanted to illustrate that you don't need a table saw for projects like this, so I used this Craig AccuCut circular saw guide on this project, which allows you to make repeatable cuts with your circular saw. And this ended up working out really great for this particular project as most of the cuts are just over 15 inches wide, which is really perfect for this guide. I like to make these cuts on a foam insulation panel, which is available at pretty much any home center. And this just helps to keep the saw blade from damaging whatever's below the piece I'm cutting. For the larger pieces, I needed to cross cut one of the sheets of plywood. So I pulled out my circular saw guide or doorboard as it's sometimes called, which I made in a previous video. Between the AccuCut and one or two of these door boards, you can break down any sheet goods with no table saw. I used a drywall T-square to make sure the door board was square to the plywood, clamped it in place, and then made the cut. Now, after showing these two methods, I did finish cutting the rest of the pieces on my table saw just to speed things along. A few of the boards needed pocket holes drilled in them before assembly, so I did that using my Craig K4 pocket hole jig. You could definitely cut more dados into the center dividers and skip the pocket holes, but that would require either a table saw or a router. Before I dive into assembling this thing, let's take a second to talk about the design of this piece. Basically, I'm using individual pieces of plywood to build up larger panels and leaving gaps between the pieces to essentially create dados. And this is something I saw Jesse Ueda from iJessup and Homemade Modern do on a project, and I thought it was a super cool idea. This process of additive joinery allows people who don't have access to a table saw or a router the ability to make something like this. But that said, it does use a lot more plywood, but I think it's a cool finished look. Back to the build, I could start the process of gluing this whole cabinet together. First, I glued up the top and bottom panels. I used a scrap piece of the same plywood as a spacer, added some glue, and then pin nailed one of the pieces in place, making sure it was square to the panel. I kept repeating this process until all the pieces were added on the top and bottom panels, and then added clamps around the edges of the panels to make sure any of the gaps were closed up. I could then repeat the same steps for the sides. And it was absolutely critical that each of these pieces was square as any errors would have compounded as I added more pieces across the panels. And I used a 12 inch speed square just to check for square along the way. And pin nails don't have a ton of holding power so you could pry up the boards and reattach them if you do get out of square but luckily I didn't need to do that. After letting the glue dry, I could scrape off any of the glue squeeze out from the edges. An optional step is to trim the edges of the panels using a table saw to get rid of excess glue squeeze out and just remove any inconsistencies between the pieces. And if you don't have a table saw, you could just use a belt sander after gluing the rest of the cabinet together. Next, I could get to assembling the cabinet carcass. First, I added glue to the center dados in the bottom and top panel, added the uprights, and then added the top panel and some clamps. I could then add the side panels, adding plenty of glue and then clamping them in place. And you can see here how nicely everything seated. It was totally gap free and I was just really happy with the way this whole thing came together. Now I had run out of clamps at that point so I had to let the glue dry and then could come back and add the shelves. First I added the center shelves which are attached solely with pocket screws. I cut some spacers over the miter saw to hold the pieces at the right height while I added clamps and then I could drive in the screws. And also I'm assembling this whole thing upside down so the pocket holes will be facing the ground in the final cabinet. Next, I could add the outer shelves. The dado for the first shelf was pretty tight so I kinda had to persuade it into place with a dead blow mallet and then clamp the shelf and add some pocket screws. The other shelf slid right in, no persuasion needed. And after I got that one installed, I could check everything for square, which it was, and then just let the glue dry. Before painting the cabinet, I sanded any of the loose pieces just to kind of keep them from screwing up the paint, but I saved most of the sanding on those kind of exposed plywood edges for after paint since I need to sand the edges to remove any excess paint anyway. I also chamfered the outside edges with my little block plane, which I absolutely love for this task. Next came the tedious process of taping off all those plywood edges. 
and this probably wasn't completely necessary since I could have just sanded back the excess paint, but I really didn't want any paint getting into the voids on the plywood edges and messing up the look. After taping, I could roll on a couple coats of this Valspar furniture paint, which actually worked pretty well. I probably should have added one more coat, I only did two, but I'm pretty happy with how the surface looks. All right guys, while well, I finished painting the cabinet, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Lowe's Home Improvement, and the tool of the week, this Craftsman 35 foot tape measure. Now obviously any woodworking shop needs a good quality tape measure or multiples considering I'm always kind of misplacing mine around the shop. And this particular tape has a lot of features I look for in a tape measure. First of all, it's got nice, big, easy to read numbers. It's got a coating on the blade so these numbers should stay over time, not wear off. It's got a nice long 11 foot standoff, which means you can stretch this tape out 11 feet before it's gonna snap meaning you can measure across the room really easily. It's also got a nice big hook on the end so that if you're trying to measure a long board, it's gonna stay put and not slide off, which is super annoying, especially when it snaps closed on your fingers. And overall, it's just got really good ergonomics. It's got this kind of rubber over mold, so it's nice and grippy. And it's made in the USA with global materials, which is something I love that Craftsman is focusing on. So if you wanna learn more about this tape measure, check out the link in the video description below. And thanks again to Lowe's for sponsoring this week's project. And let's get back to it. After letting the second coat dry, I peeled back the tape and was left with some less than perfect paint lines, but that didn't really matter as I needed to sand the edges anyway. Before doing that, I filled any of the voids or gaps between the pieces with wood filler, and then I could sand the edges with 180 grit to smooth them out. For the chamfers, I just took a few more passes with the block plane and it cleaned them right up, and I love how crisp the paint lines are wherever I use that plane. Really, it was an ideal tool for that job. And it was at this point that I decided I wasn't gonna add a back to this cabinet because it just doesn't need it. It's plenty sturdy without it. And this way you could put this shelf in the middle of the room and it would still look really cool. So I sanded the back edges as well, breaking the edges with a little bit of hand sanding. Finally, I could add a few coats of water-based polyurethane to the plywood edges to seal them and the cabinet was done. And if you wanted, you could just stop here and you'd basically have a super beefy Ikea Calyx, but I wanted some doors for this thing. And actually the entire point of building this was to replace our existing Ikea Calyx as our little dude is about to start crawling and we really needed some doors to keep him out of the contents of the shelves. And rather than just make doors for the Calyx, I figured this would be a good opportunity to rebuild this piece, making it a whole lot beefier and experiment with this process of additive joinery. I cut the doors to size on the table saw from some scrap plywood and then started drilling the holes for the Euro hinges I was using with this Craig concealed hinge jig. And these hinges are soft close, another bonus for the little guy so he can't smash his fingers if he does manage to open the doors. After drilling all the holes for the hinges, I sanded all the doors, breaking all the sharp edges, and then I could paint the doors. And I used four different colors for the doors just to add some visual interest to the piece. And here are the exact colors I use since I always get asked this question. I sprayed on a few coats on the doors and then let the paint dry overnight. Once the paint dried, I could go ahead and install the hinges on the doors as well as these door poles. And they're super simple and low profile. I really like the way they look. I'll have a link to them in the video description below if you wanna check them out. Next, I needed to add the other half of the hinges on the inside of the cabinet. I made a quick drilling jig for this so I didn't have to measure over and over and pre-drilled all the holes then installed the plates in the cabinet carcass. To keep the doors from closing too far into the cabinet, I added these rubber door stops, which have a cam adjustment so you can dial in the door placement just by turning the stop. Finally, I could attach the doors to the plates, make any adjustments, and the doors were done. The last thing to add on this project were some legs, and in this case, I decided to use these cool red rubber casters. I think this gives the piece a little bit of an industrial vibe, and as a bonus, it makes the whole thing really easy to move since this is super heavy. Now, if you don't like the casters, you could add hairpin legs, make some legs out of more plywood, or just sit the whole thing right on the ground. There are tons of options there. And with the casters added, this media console was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I really like the way this thing came out. Obviously, it is just a direct copy of the IKEA Calyx in its kind of form factor, but I think it's obviously gonna be a lot more sturdy considering it's built out of solid plywood rather than whatever that particle board is that the IKEA version is made out of. Uh, the biggest thing, the reason I built this is that we needed some doors just to keep our little guy who's about to start crawling out of this thing. Also, another reason I left the back off, which I kind of forgot to mention during the main part of the video, is so I can tether this thing to 
the wall so that he can't tip it over. Love the way all the colors came out. I think this color palette is really nice. I actually used a website to kind of figure out the color palette. It really kind of helped me come up with the four different colors I wanted to use to kind of go along with the main color of the cabinet carcass, which is obviously just white. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed to the channel. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every Wednesday. Also ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, if you do want to build this for yourself, I'll have links to all the tools and materials I used on this project, all of them available at Lowe's in the video description below as well. And last, I do have these new build it yourself t-shirts. They're super soft, super comfy. Everybody who's purchased them, it seems like they're really liking them. So hopefully you guys will go check those out. I'll have links to those in the video description below as well. So thanks again for watching everybody. And until next week, happy building.